That was not what was in the cup that he drank for us. That was not how he paid for our sins. The following verses show us that the cup idea is used as a picture of God's wrath in Scripture. Psalm 75, verse 8, Isaiah 51, 17, and verse 22, Jeremiah 25, verse 15, Habakkuk 2, verse 16, and Revelation 14, verses 9 through 10. Jesus was not worried about being on a Roman cross. He was worried that when he was on that cross, the full measure of God's wrath for your sin and my sin would be put on him. He would endure what I deserved, what you deserve, the just wrath of God against our sin. All sin will be punished. All sin must be punished if God is a good judge. The only question is, will that sin be punished in the future, on Judgment Day, or 2,000 years ago, on a cross in Jerusalem? God has given his people this choice to make. Where and when do they want their sin to be punished? We are reconciled to God because of the gospel. Let's turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, starting in verse 18. It says, Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. There are many verses that talk about our separation from God because of sin, and our reconciliation to God through the cross. Romans 3, verse 9, 19, and 23 Romans 1, verses 28 through 32, Romans 2, verses 1 through 16, Romans 11, verse 32, Ecclesiastes 7, verse 20, Galatians 3, verse 22, 1 John 1, verse 8 through 10, Hebrews 9, verse 5, 1 John 2, verse 2, 1 John 4, verse 10, Isaiah 50, verse 1, Proverbs 15, verse 29, and Jeremiah 5, verse 25. The next doctrine on the list that's important to the gospel is the doctrine of God's love. We know the famous verse that says it was because of God's great love for the world that he sent his son in John 3:16. Romans 5, verse 8 says, But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Also, in 1 John, it says, In this the love of God was manifested toward us, that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. This concept is one of the most powerful parts of the gospel, to know that God is a God of love and that he knows each of us and cares for us so much that he took our punishment for us. John 15 verse 13 says, Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. You will be an effective preacher of the gospel if you study the doctrine of God's love. Here are some verses for that study. Exodus 34 verse 6 through 7 Psalm 105 verse 7 through 17, Ephesians 1, verse 6 through 8, Ephesians 2, verse 7, 1 Timothy 1, verse 16, Titus 3, verse 4, 1 John 4, verse 9 through 19, 1 John 3, verse 16, Luke 4, verse 18, Deuteronomy 7, verses 7 through 8, and Ephesians 2, verses 4 through 5.
Okay, let's move on to the doctrine of the Incarnation. God became a man. Why was this necessary to the gospel? First, here are a few verses that talk about the fact that God did become a man. Isaiah 9, verse 6. Galatians 4, verses 4 and 5. John 1, verse 14. And 1 Timothy 3, verse 16. Let's turn to Hebrews chapter 2, starting at verse 14. Since, therefore, the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise partook of the same things, that through death he might destroy the one who has power of death, that is, the devil, and deliver all those who through fear of death were subject to lifelong slavery. For surely it is not angels that he helps, but he helps the offspring of Abraham. Therefore he had to be made like his brothers in every respect, so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God, to make propitiation for the sins of people. For because he himself has suffered when tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. It says here, Jesus shared in flesh and blood that he might set others free through his death. It says in verse 17 that he had to become human so he could be a merciful high priest and make propitiation. The high priest in the Old Testament would stand before God for the people. He would make the sacrifice in the Holy of Holies once a year on the Day of Atonement. Propitiation, again, is the sacrifice that turns away God's wrath. Man has sinned and caused the wrath of God. Man must be punished. God cannot punish angels for what man has done. He must punish man. This is an important idea, so let's turn to Romans chapter 5, starting in verse 17, to find out more about it. It says, For if, because of one man's trespass, death reigned through that one man, much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as one trespass led to condemnation for all men, so one act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all men. For as by the one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience the many will be made righteous. There is so much more to say on this point of Jesus becoming a man, like about his being our high priest and how he prays for us or how he was a kinsman redeemer, like in the book of Ruth, or how he was the Passover lamb. I will give you some verses to study on the importance of Christ becoming a man. 1 Corinthians fifteen twenty one through 22 Galatians 3, verse 10 Hebrews 2, verse 10 Hebrews 4, verse 15 Romans 8, verse 3 Galatians 4, verse 4 Philippians 2, verses 7 through 8, Hebrews 9, verse 15, Isaiah 53, verse 12, Romans 14, verse 9, and Colossians 2, verse 15. Another point is about why only a perfect man could die for the sins of man. The fact that Jesus never sinned is very important to the gospel. It was also important for him to be tempted, just as we are because he needed to fulfill the law perfectly. One thing to remember is that God the Father cannot be tempted. So, God had to become a man so that he could be tempted and not sin, thereby becoming an acceptable sacrifice for man. Let's turn to Hebrews 4, verse 15. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who, in every respect, has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Jesus was the only person to never sin, and the only person, therefore, to deserve to go to heaven. If you know about the sacrifices in the Old Testament, you know that the lambs and bulls had to be perfect without physical defect. Jesus was the only one to qualify to be a sacrifice for us because he was the only perfect one among us, 
who had never sinned. Before we could have a sacrifice to turn away God's wrath towards man, we first needed a man to be an acceptable sacrifice by perfectly obeying God. So this helps us understand propitiation and how Christ paid for our sins. God trades the righteousness of Christ for our sin on the cross. We give Jesus our sin to be punished on the cross. And Jesus gives us his righteousness in exchange. A transfer was made on the cross. On the cross, God did to Jesus what he should do to us. And in exchange, God does to us what he should do to Jesus. God gives us what only Christ has earned the right to have, a right relationship with God and eternal life in heaven. God sprinkles the blood of the Lamb on us so that when he looks at us, he no longer sees the law. He sees only Christ's righteousness. Let's turn back to 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21. It says, For our sake he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Let's turn to Isaiah 53, starting in verse 4. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. And then in verse 11 it says, out of the anguish of his soul, he shall see and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. We will have righteousness, it says, given to our account. God no longer sees you as a sinner if you have repented and accepted Christ's substitution. And that is the only reason God's Spirit can be inside of you. Let's turn to Ephesians chapter 1. What I'm going to do now is talk about the idea that the gospel is according to the scriptures, just like it says in 1 Corinthians 15. It says Jesus died according to the scriptures. I want to talk about some of the prophecies of the new covenant in the Old Testament. Understanding this really helped me understand the gospel better than ever before. So let's start by reading verse 13 of Ephesians 1. In him, this is speaking of Jesus, by the way, you also trusted, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. Okay, so it says that after you heard and believed the gospel, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit. It then says something very interesting, that this spirit is the, quote, guarantee. Some translations, like the King James, say earnest. But the definition of that Greek word is very interesting. It means a part of a payment made, which guarantees that the rest of the payment will be made in the future. So it says that the proof that you will eventually be glorified is that you have been given the Spirit of God. We're going to see why the Bible says this so strongly in a moment, why it is so sure that the presence of God's Spirit in your body while here on earth is a guarantee of your future eternal life in heaven. But first, I want you to see other examples of this. Let's turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 1, starting in 